Hey, Devoted Dreamer, thanks for joining me for this little mini episode while I am on maternity leave. Today, I wanted to introduce you to Heather Conklin. She is a Memphis transplant now living near me and near Boulder, Colorado. And she's the co-host of the Practical Minimalist podcast. And that, of course, is how we connected um, over our mutual love for podcasting. She is a mama of two kiddos and a wife. And I wanted to bring her on the show today for this little mini episode to talk about maybe something you might not expect, but it's letting your dream lie fallow. So taking a break from the dream God has given you. So this topic came up when we had lunch back in April, and I just wanted to bring her on to share her perspective um, with you. So welcome, Heather. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Why don't you start off with what does this even mean? letting your dream lie fallow. What's what's going on with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think this is such an interesting thing to talk about because I feel like there's a lot out there about letting things go, taking a rest, taking a step back. But to me, I mean, this is definitely, it's close cousin, I suppose. It's related, but it's not quite the same practice. And so for me, letting the land lie fallow, like it's, it's definitely something you may have heard of from a biblical perspective, but it's also like, like something that farmers do, which I can I can get into. I mean, because the parallels are so cool. But so letting a dream lie fallow, if you want to use that term, it doesn't mean that you're totally letting it go or giving it up. It just means that you're giving it a rest and letting it sit sit in the soil, if you will. So I actually looked up. I am not a farmer. <laughs> by any means. So I looked up, um, like, what does this actually mean to let the land lie fallow from a farmer's perspective? And it's a very common practice. And it goes back probably for thousands of years, hundreds of years, at least. It's a practice in crop rot rotation where they don't fully harvest the soil, like they let it lie for a season so that so like the idea is that it's nutrients aren't fully depleted and that land can continue to bear fruit. And to me, that's that's what the, the practice is. It's not, like I said, not totally letting it go or saying that you're giving up. It's just kind of the practice of letting, letting your dreams, your creativity, like just have a rest for a while so that new fruit can be born. Okay. And so I'll just cut to the chase. You're doing this with your podcast, Practical Minimalists. So yes, tell us about yes. coming to that decision and how long and all those details. Yeah, sure. So we've been doing the podcast for two years. It's kind of crazy to, to realize that. <laughs> it doesn't seem mm -hmm. like it's been that long. And we take breaks um, for the holidays and, and even for the for the summer. So as we're recording this, um, we're coming up um, kind of to a natural stopping place anyway. Uh, we typically take a break for the summer, but this time it feels it felt a little bit different. We were really feeling like not that we didn't have anything to say or we didn't love podcasting. We we're just like we're not sure where the podcast is going to go next and where what direction to do. if we do continue. What is our message? and our content going to be. Um, we kind of, it's not that we feel unclear or not excited or, you know, it's not anything negative. It just felt very natural. Like we want to make sure that the content and the conversations that we're sharing are meaningful and fruitful. And we're kind of feeling like we're coming up on the end of a season where we gave a lot and we created a lot. And now it's time to just kind of sit with it and figure out what we're going to do next. And we may not come back. We don't know. It is a little bit scary because we do feel that committed to putting rich things out into the world. And, and if it means it's time to move on to something else, that's totally fine with us. But it may mean, you know, a, a new direction for the show or some new ideas. Who knows? It is a little bit of a practice in bravery. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's what exactly what I was going to say too. Like I'm feeling a little bit of that. Like it takes courage to let go of something for a season. And as I'm getting ready to go on maternity leave at this point, I have six weeks to go and it's like, oh, what is going to happen? Who am I even going to be four months from now? Right. You're you going to be a different person. <laughs> totally. <laughs> And so it is like to hear you even say we may not come back like that's like, I don't know, like I'm such a change resistant person that it's like, yeah. that, it's really scary to be like, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of this bold thing that I'm 
doing to take a break. I mean, I do think that's a bold thing. So yeah, I mean, it's scary, but it can if you frame it in the right way, it can be freeing too, because we get so tied to our habits and our rituals and our routines and our jobs, everything. But it's like, you know, you you have a choice here, you know. Totally. Um, so there's like a bit of unease about it. But there's also a lot of freedom in it, too. Unease and freedom. Yeah, it's like, is that possible? But that's, <laughs> that's what it feels like. <laughs> Totally. What are you hoping might be the outcome or the result? Like, I mean, do you have, you said you don't know, but. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, I'm not hoping for any specific outcome. The, the best thing that I could say is that I'm hoping for clarity. And that's to me is the best feeling in the world. And we can't always have clarity, big picture. I, I don't even think that I want clarity like for my whole life, but I am working on the practice of having clarity moment by moment, like in the present moment. And I believe that's possible. And, um, and so, yeah, that would really be my hopeful outcome is just simply clarity. And do you have like, I know what I'm going to be doing on my break. <laughs> what do you have some specific practices that you're hoping to spend time on? Or is it really just, I'm just letting it go and not going to think about it? Like, what are you planning to do during the time? Well, like just regarding the podcast specifically or just yeah. generally? Yeah, speak? or or generally. It's summer. I mean, you might be yeah. going on vacation, right? <laughs> well, regarding the podcast, like both of us, I mean, we're just not, we, we might pop in on Instagram and interact a little bit, but we're not doing any, like tomorrow, actually, I almost, I might cry um, say, saying this, we're recording our last couple of episodes for the season. And after that, like after the, you know, production process is complete and the episode gets edited, that will be it. Like I, I don't plan on spending any time creatively on that very intentionally. Um, mm -hmm. It's just kind of like letting it go out into the world and do its thing. You know, it's no longer mine, you know? Yeah. And then just generally speaking around this whole topic of letting the land lie fallow, it's just really um, giving myself the space to take a break from that. But I'm certainly working on other creative endeavors. I, I, I feel like I can't stop creating and that's a good feeling, but it's, it's tricky knowing like when to, to let things go dormant and other things bloom and when to till the soil, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a practice and it helps to have people like you and like my podcast mastermind that I'm into that are people that are like-minded to have around me so that we can kind of coach each other on these things. I don't think um, now that I'm thinking about it, I could have come to this conclusion on my own. It certainly helps to have like-minded people around just to bounce ideas mm -hmm. off of, kind of keep you on the path. <laughs> yeah. I love that you mentioned your mastermind because that was my mastermind first recommended to me to do seasons with my podcast and that that was yeah. an okay thing to do. Like, Who's going to care? <laughs> it's just, you know, it's okay to take a break. Yeah, totally. And, and I think it's even when we're not beholden to like an employer or something, I mean, that we're truly yeah. putting this thing out into the world because we want to do it. It's so easy. I mean, Aaron and I have both uh, found ourselves having to slow down and say, all right, it's okay if we don't put out an episode this week. Like we've had a couple of times where somebody was sick or the technology was not in our, on our side or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and I, we had to take a deep breath and be like, no, but it's, it's totally fine. You know, we can take breaks when we need to. It's just, it, it is kind of easy to get caught up in that feeling like you've got to please everyone and, mm -hmm. you know, competing against yourself even. So for the person listening, who's hearing this and and maybe thinking, oh, gosh, I'd never thought about that. Or I have thought about that, but was too, you know, scared to let my dream go for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to her as far as like how you came to this decision in the first place or what how someone else might decide the same thing? Oh, that's a good question. I think I would ask her more questions. Um, I would say definitely my path is going to be different from yours. You have to listen to you, the spirit within you. And I would say, and this is very something that has been very helpful to me, you have all the answers that you need inside. Um, if you've got that connection to that 
you know, that greater thing that to God, that higher power, you have everything you need. You don't need someone else to tell you what to do. You don't need a book to tell you what to do. You don't even need this podcast to tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what to do. And I really believing that and feeling that and knowing that in my bones has been a game changer for me. It's it's especially in this world of just constant information. It's so easy to look outside of ourselves for the answers, but you have all the answers that you need. Even if you struggle to believe that. (laughs) Yes, yes. Yes. Even if you struggle and even if you feel indecisive, it's weird. I feel like I am a very decisive person, but I also feel like I'm the most indecisive person in the world. And that's something that's that's why I keep thinking about that clarity piece. And yeah, really cultivating that knowingness that I have all the answers is is the best the best thing ever. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I think you're right, too. It's so easy to think that I should just look at what somebody else is doing and emulate that or make decisions like they're doing because I respect what they're doing. But it's like, no, I'm I'm living a totally different life. I have a totally different dream. I I have a totally different past and future from that person. Yes. So Yeah, totally. And, and, you know, Grace, though, we've all done that, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. because, and, it, and this is the conclusion that I've come to anyway, when we find ourselves, whether it's playing the comparison game or not, not even in a bad way, just like, oh, I'm going to go do what she did. It's because most of the time when you see people just succeeding and they're bearing fruit, you know, and all these things, it's because they're in alignment with who they are. And I think that alignment, that connection to God um, is super attractive. And so we want to, of course, we want that. Like we want to emulate that, but we have to be careful to really like cultivate our self-awareness and realize like, okay, am I being inspired? by her just to go out on my own path? Or am I trying to follow her exact path? Because if you're trying to follow someone's exact path, I think it, it sets you up for some unnecessary stress. Absolutely. And maybe like getting into a place of not being authentic to who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is such a good conversation. And I want to keep it short, but so excited to to be able to talk about how good it is to let something go for a season. And like you said, not have expectations, not (laughs) feel like, oh, when I get back, my podcast is going to be so much better, or I'm going to have some brilliant, even more creative idea. Like you're just going into it with open hands. And I loved what you talked about at the beginning, letting it sit in the soil, like a farmer would let the land rest and grow in its nutrients so that it could provide fruit later. I think it's really brave and courageous what you're doing. And do you have any kind of last thoughts you'd like to share? Anything I didn't ask you about? I I guess um, I could leave you guys with a recommendation. Would that work? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Now here I am just saying, don't don't listen to podcasts or read books. You know, you have all the answers within. And I believe that, but sometimes it does help, you know, to listen to something inspirational. So I I did want to share a, a podcast episode and I, I can send you a link so you can put it in your show notes if, if you want. Yeah. That really... Um, if you're not getting this concept and you're like, well, that sounds great, but, or I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, There was an episode um, on the Robcast that really inspired me and was deeply impactful to me, like on this very topic. And it was called letting the land lie fallow. And I just thought he did such a good job of explaining his practice. I think about it all the time and I go back and, and listen to it when I feel a season like this coming on, or I know I'm going into a season. Um, I'd love to leave that for your listeners. If it sounds interesting to them. Yeah, absolutely. Send me a link. I'll put it in the show notes. Definitely. (laughs) Well, thanks, Heather. This is encouraging. And maybe we can talk again at the end of your season of letting the the land lie fallow and hear what God did and where things ended up. Absolutely. I'm I'm so curious to know how that conversation (laughs) would go. And I'd be happy to come on and tell you, give you guys an update. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,